hi guys welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is kosi and if this is your first time coming across my video thank you so much please hit on the subscribe button turn on your notification bell so you're notified once i upload a new video so in today's video i'll share with you guys on how i draft cut and sew a 720 degree flame with crinoline you get i made this with crinoline as you can see so if this sounds like something you're interested to learn please keep on watching and let's get into today's video please not forget to share like and let me know what you think on the comment section so guys let's get into today's video so guys before we cut out our flare i'm going to lecture you guys more so you know what 720 degrees flare is all about and how you calculate it you get so for the waist i'm making use of 34 inches for the waist you get plus two inches i'll add plus two inches for the seam allowance and you can see that i label it as seam allowance you get so now when you calculate 34 inches plus 2 inches you will have 36 inches and I marked it there so for 720 degrees flare what you are going to do is to mark the 36 inches then you're going to divide your 36 inches by 8 when cutting a 720 degrees flare always divide your waist circumference by 8 inches so when I do that I have 4.5 inches and I already marked it there as you can see so anytime you're making a 720 degrees flare you're going to always remember to divide your waist circumference into 8 so after i was done doing mine this is what i got 4.5 inches so i'll lecture you guys small on how to calculate a 360 degrees flare you get 360 degrees flare i'm going to lecture you guys on that so i'm going to be making use of the same waist that is the same 36 inches waist i'm going to make use of it you get so what i did here was write 34 plus 2 inches equals to 36 inches and right now for the for 360 degrees flare you're going to calculate um 36 divided by 4 once i do that i got 9 inches so you can see where i have here so the 4.5 inches i had on the 720 degrees flare is half circle is half a circle you get so when making a 360 degrees flare you are going to cut out just one piece for it do you get and when making a 720 degrees flare you are going to cut two piece for it you can see where i labeled it you are going to cut out two piece for it that is times two you get when you cut out the first flay, you're going to cut out the second one using the same flay as well. You get so for the 360 degrees flay, you can see that I wrote just one flay here. So this simply means that you're going to cut out just one piece, just one piece for a 360 degrees flay. So guys, right here, this is my paper, my brown paper. So as you can see that I folded it into two, then I also folded it again into four. So I'm going to be making use of this, uh, this cover edge, this covered edge here. I'm going to start from there. Do you get? Now to get the normal width for the flay, what I'm going to do is to use the 4.5 inches I got. Do you get? For the 720 degrees flame i'll use the 4.5 so i'll add extra half an inch to make it five inches do you get so right now i am marking three and a half inches as you can see so go ahead and mark three and a half inches this total depends on what you had on your after dividing your your waist by four do you get so I marked three and a half inches so after making my point i'll go ahead and trace those lines here just connect it to give you a circle so after that i placed my tape like this to know if i have up to the five inches or i have more than it when i measure it i have extra half an inch so what i did was to come up by half an inch you can see when i came up by that half an inch i came up by half an inch so i used it to form a circle just like this can you see so I, i'll just go ahead and place my tape and i'll measure where i have and you can see it's five inches do you get so after i was done doing that what i'm going to do again is to take the length of this flame so the length is seven inches but i added extra one and a half to make it eight and a half inches do you get so it's for the stitching allowance and for the same allowance as well as you can see so right now i'll just go ahead and 
mark out the 8.5 inches then after making my point there what i'll do is to go ahead and connect those points i have to give me a circle so go ahead and connect yours connect yours like this as you can see so for the two lines i have there when cutting my flay i'm going to cut it from the first line this one here i'll cut it from the first line so don't be confused so after connecting you can see where i have it so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to go ahead and cut it off then after cutting it off i'll use the same pattern to cut out on the actual fabric so guys after i was done cutting you can see where i have here so i'll just go ahead and open it up so you see how it looks like so this is what it looks like when i open it up you can see so right now what i'm going to do is to use the same pattern here to cut out on the actual fabric remember it's 720 degrees flare so i'll just cut it i'll use the same pattern to cut two of it then also cut out the lining as well two of it as well you get so after cutting i also go ahead and join the lining after joining the boat lining, I also join the boat I mean, fabric, that is the boat um, Ankara. I also go ahead and join it as well. So guys, as at the time I was filming this tutorial, I didn't know my camera wasn't recording. I didn't know it wasn't recording at all. It was when I tried joining here. That was when I said, okay, let me check my phone. And to be very honest, when I checked it, I was so upset because I already gone a very long way with this tutorial. So I had to start afresh by using this uh, brown pepper for the drafting because when I cut this uh, flay I cut it directly on the main fabric so it was because of this that's why I used the paper to cut it out so please listen to my explanations so you understand what I just did here after cutting the both flays for the lining and the archer fabric I slashed one of the lining and one of the main fabric of the flay so after that you can see where i'm showing you guys i went ahead to iron my stay after ironing my stay i had to join the boat piece together you get so the boats um piece for the flay for the ankara you can see that i joined it together i did same thing for the lining as well can you see so after i was done doing that you can see what i have here i hope this explanation helps a lot so this is where i have here after i was done can you see so right now what i'm trying to do is to add the crino line i told you guys that i was using that i was using for this tutorial so this is my crino line so what i did was to place this line in the right side facing each other so the main fabric was first to place then the lining was second to place then my crino line was third you can see that the crino line is two inches wideness so this is my hemming gun you can see my hemming gun here so i placed the ankara firstly then secondly i placed the lining thirdly i placed the crino line and lastly i had to place my hemming gun so this hemming gun is not really it's very is optional you can decide to use it can decide not to use it as well so i used it so it's going to help the damp parts relax so well when i iron it or at the time i iron it out after sewing so right here you're going to just head over to your sewing machine then go ahead and sew using your half an inch you get just like i did here you can see that i'm gonna head to pin it down so from there you're going to sew with half of an inch after doing i'll be right back so guys i've gone ahead to sew with half an inch after so you can see where i have here so i'll just go ahead and trim off this rough edge of the crino line here so after trimming it off you can see where i have here can you see my what i did so i did this on all the on the down part of the flay on all the down part of the flay so you can see so the next thing i'm going to do is to go ahead and open it up i want to go ahead and make a top stitch you get so to make a top stitch you're going to open it up the wrong side then you're going to sew it like this you can see what i'm doing here so we're going to top stitch this towards the side facing the lining or towards your lining side i don't know how to explain this 
just take a look at what i'm doing go ahead and sew like that you get so after i was done sewing i'll just show you guys what it looks like so this is the sewing you can see after top stitching this is what i have here can you see so right now what i'm going to be doing next is to open the wrong side of the fabric then after opening the wrong side of the fabric i am going to go ahead and sew the both side of the main fabric so go ahead and flip it over to the wrong side you can see where i did here head over to your sewing machine and go ahead and sew like this then you're going to also do the same thing here for the other side go ahead and flip it over hold your lining and the and main fabric together go ahead and sew like this so after i was done sewing you can see what i have here so after i was done sewing you can see where i have here can you see so I also gone ahead to sew the the upper part as well. You can see what I did here. I sewed the upper part as well. So after I was done doing this, the next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and iron it very properly. Okay, so when ironing, make use of water. Go ahead and spray water on the bottom part of the flay. Then iron it very well. Steady iron it very, very well. So it's going to relax. I'll go ahead and do this after doing it. I will be right back to show you guys what it looks like. So maintain the bottom part when ironing so the line is not showing on the right side of the fabric. So guys, after I've done ironing, you can see what I have here. Can you see how relaxed it's looking and it's looking so beautiful like this. So you can see. So go ahead and make sure you iron yours very well and very very properly. So in order to iron this very well, so it's going to relax like mine, you are going to make use of water. This is my water here. Just go ahead and spread water there. Go ahead and iron it very well. Iron very properly as in very very well so it's going to relax. You get so like this is how it looks like after I was done. So it's not I'm um, standing properly because I placed it on the flat surface. So I'll just go ahead and wear it on my manicure so you see the final look, just like you see in the beginning of the video. So guys, this hair is looking after I was done. I uh, placing on my manicure. You can see how it looks like. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next one. Please do not forget to subscribe, like and share this video. Bye.